In this video, I want to work through number six on um, one of the interactive proof problems, proof sets, and 9C, which has to do with using the change of quantifier rule. So here's the problem that we are given. <clears throat> Premise one says uh, nothing is P. Premise two says either something is Q or something is both P and S. And then the conclusion we're supposed to get to is something is Q. Now look at that for a second. Do you see the conclusion hidden anywhere inside the premises? Answer, yes, you do. The conclusion is one of the disjuncts, the first disjunct of premise two. So what rule could you use to derive that conclusion from premise two? It's an old familiar one. That's right, disjunctive syllogism. You could use disjunctive syllogism, but in order to use disjunctive syllogism, you're gonna to need to come up with somehow the negation of that second disjunct. So premise two says either something is Q or something is both P and S. So we're gonna to need to show somehow that it's not the case that something is both P and S. So how are we going to do that? Well, um, in order to do that, we're probably going to have to do some instantiation and generalization. That is, uh, if you check out premise one here, it says it's not the case that something is P. And intuitively, you can see that if it's not the case that something is P, then it's not the case that something is both P and S. But to connect these dots, what we're going to have to do is use some implication rules, which means we're going to have to bring premise one um, out of quantifiers and, and generalize it. I'm sorry, and instantiate it. And we're going to somehow have to then <clears throat> back up this premise and and to uh, to to get it out of quantifiers as well. And in order to make both of those moves, first of all, we I mean we can't do it. We don't have a a rule that will work on a tilde plus quantifier. So we're going to have to use our change of quantifier rule in order to generalize these. So if number, look at premise one, if it's not the case that something is P, that is equivalent to saying that it, everything is not P. Okay, great. And then back here, we can get it's not the case that something is P and S from saying it is true of everything that it's not both P and S. Okay, so we're working backwards from our conclusion at the same time as we're working forwards from our premises. And in between here, we're gonna get the stuff out of quantifiers so we can use implication rules. So let's get this stuff out of quantifiers. When we get to premise three here, we've got this general statement, premise three, for all X, it's not P of X. Well, we can use universal instantiation just to make that not, uh, Px. It's not the case that x is p. Uh, similarly, we can, working backwards from this uh, statement, this universal generalization statement, um, we can we can derive that from this statement. It's not the case that x is p and x is s. All right, so these are the dots we're trying to connect here, right? Um, <clears throat> Well, how are we going to do it? We've got, it's not the case that X is P and it's not the case that X is both P and S. So how are we going to connect these last dots? Are you seeing a way that you could use implication rules now to connect these dots? Oh, indeed, you are seeing that. Here's what we can do. We can use addition on line four to say, it's not the case that P, the X is P or it's not the case that X is S. And then we use De Morgan's um, <clears throat> in order to derive that next line, that last line that we needed. And that is, it's not the case that X is P and X is S. And at that point, we've connected the dots. Um, and, you know, we can just, I filled in the numbers here. We're all done with our proof. But I mean, look at the basic pattern here, right? Um, we needed to change quantifiers to get this. Uh, universalized so we can instantiate it so we could do implication rules so that we could then generalize it again and uh, and get where we need it to be. That's a pretty common pattern.